Coming up on today's edition of Vikings Now by Chat Sports, I'm going to be giving you guys five players that I think who could get cut from the Minnesota Vikings roster. These are surprise cut candidates, so we're going to be getting a little bold here, getting a little out there. I'm going to be giving you guys five names that could be shockingly cut from the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Patrick Seatman, and welcome in. And if you guys want to show some love to your team, the team that's going to be rocking the purple and gold every weekend, I want you to like today's video. If you think the Minnesota Vikings are going to repeat as NFC North champions, go down there, hit that thumbs up icon because, hey, the bookmakers out west, the dudes in Vegas, they got the Lions as overwhelming favorites. I totally disagree. Show some love for, for your favorite team and like today's video. Let's talk about it. Number one surprise cut candidate. Yeah, Andrew Booth Jr., the second round pick out of Clemson last season. And he really struggled against the Seattle Seahawks in the first preseason game. That's why he does find himself on this list because the Vikings cornerback room you know, I wouldn't say it's loaded, but it's extremely deep with guys that could compete for that cornerback two spot. Like we've mentioned, we've said Byron Murphy, he'll be cornerback one. He'd even dress for the um, for the Seahawks preseason game, so he's locked in there. But then there's a ton of names that you could throw in there for the CB2 and CB3 and CB4, like Tate Gowan, Kalen Barnes, Najee Thompson, who balled out against Seattle, and then my guy, Joan Williams, and the third-round rookie, Makai Blackman, you know, all those guys have an argument to make the roster. And with Booth struggling in week one and just not overall being the best scheme fit, like he ran a lot of zone in high school and even in college as well. So then we obviously know Brian Flores. He loves to run man to man. So it's not the best scheme fit for Booth. And I actually kind of laid out my Vikings cornerback projection. And I think it's going to come down to cornerback five for uh, Andrew Booth. Because these four names right here, I think no doubt make the team over Booth. I understand Booth has that kind of second round shield where it would be kind of tough to move off from a guy and rip that bandaid off from a dude you just drafted in the second round. But I think Byron Murphy will make it over him. A Caleb Evans, Brian Flores loves him. He's going to make it no doubt. And then Joe Juan Williams absolutely hooped during the first preseason game against the Seahawks, had a couple of sweet pass breakups. And then same with Makai Blackman. The Seahawks tested Blackman a couple of times, but he's been kind of living up to that third round hype that we took him in this last year's NBA or NFL draft. And then also Najee Thompson. Like, keep your eyes out for Najee. He played very, very well against the Seattle Seahawks, and Brian Flores loves the way he plays. He's a really solid scheme fit for this team. So I think the Vikings got a decision to make. Will, we, will they keep Andrew Booth, even though he is not the greatest scheme fit, and hoping he figures it out, or will they go another direction? But I'll ask you guys, this will be the pinned comment on today's video. Will Andrew Booth make the 53-man roster? I can't believe I'm even asking you guys this, but YouTube's going to throw you guys an ad break right now. Sit back, let it play, and let me know your thoughts. Will Andrew Booth Jr. make the Vikings 53-man roster? Give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no. Number two on my list, Troy Dye. I have not been a fan of Troy Dye coming out of college. Um, I just thought he was an undersized linebacker in sense of physicality, and he just frankly just hasn't impressed me at all during his NFL career. Like, he's a great locker room guy. I've heard great things about him off the field, but his on-the-field production just hasn't really been there. Like, he struggled in the run game. He was supposed to be this great coverage linebacker coming out of college, but we haven't really seen that as well. And frankly, I just don't really think the Vikings need him on this linebacker uh, kind of room here. Like, Jordan Hicks, Asamoa, no doubt making the team. Obviously, you guys know Ivan Pace. He's been absolutely balling out uh, at training camp. And even during the first preseason game, I fully expect him to make this team and maybe even compete for a chance to start. But then you got guys like Troy Reeder. I think he's going to be there as well. Like, I think Troy Reeder would probably get that nod over a guy like Troy Dye just because he's a veteran. And I will say, just the overall look of Troy Dye, like, I get the linebacker with no gloves. It's kind of this old school look. But my man Chip, who's producing this video, said he looks like a long snapper. And I kind of agree. Like, he does look like a long snapper out there on the field. He's not the most physically imposing player. So overall, Troy Dye just hasn't impressed me so much in his short NFL career so far. So I think he could be a guy that could get cut by this team. Hey, another wasted Rick Spielman draft pick. But uh, yeah, Troy Dye, he's definitely going to be a surprise cut candidate for me. Number three for me, Oli Uda. Uh, this is a bit of a shocker, and I don't really think this one is too entirely likely just because, you know, swing tackles in the NFL, even though if you're not, like, up the par with, like, the great guys, like, obviously our very own Christian Darius or Andrew Thomas, like, you're still extremely valuable. But Oli Uda, he looked terrible again against the Seattle Seahawks, and I just don't really think the Vikings should roll him out anymore, like, in this group at all. Like, I just think the Troy Re or not the Troy Reader. Uh, the Ole Uta experience has come to an end in Minnesota because obviously we got our guys. We got Christian Darisol. Obviously, Brian O'Neill is back. They're going to hold down the tackle position. But if I was going to swing tackle that I want the Vikings to keep, 
I'd rather go Blake Brandell, the big fellow out of Oregon State, over a guy like Ole Uda. Because overall, I just think this Uda saga, it just needs to come to an end. Like, I feel like we've been playing this kind of experiment for the past couple seasons. Like, we had him at guard that one year, and he was a penalty machine. Like, I remember that one season, like, I swear, he had a holding call on every important, like, second or third down. Just put the Vikings behind the sticks, and he just wasn't good. And then last year, yes, he did fill in for Brian O'Neill, and he was fine. Like, he did a solid, solid job. But then we see it again in the preseason. It's like, oh, he's back to his old self. Like, I just think this kind of experiment needs to come to an end. I think they tried it. They tried to move him around on the offensive line. But overall, it just really hasn't worked out. So Ole Uda, he's on my surprise cut candidate list. Again, unlikely because I think the Vikings want to keep him as a swing tackle, but something to keep your eyes out on. Number four for me is the guy we actually just signed, Nikhil Harry, who originally it was reported that he was going to be wearing 28 for the Vikings. But then he rolled out there with number 85. Um, I just don't really think he has a chance to make this roster, especially with a guy like Jalen Rager, you know, emerging during the preseason and during training camp for the Vikes. And overall, this room is just, you know, it's deep. You obviously got top end talent and Addison and Jefferson and Osborne. Like, those three will for sure have a roster spot. But then I expect the Vikings to also keep two receivers. And if I had to go to another direction, like, I'm going Jalen Rager and Jalen Naylor no doubt. And then I'm probably going a guy like Brandon Pohl over Nikhil Harry just because of his punt return and kick return ability. So overall, I just think this room is just way too stacked for Nikhil to make this roster. Like, listen, he was a former first-round pick. He's got that top-end talent. He's got the first-round talent. But I just think the Vikings have too many names and too many heads in this wide receiver room where it's going to be very hard for him to kind of crack that rotation because you got four guys, I think, that are for sure locked in. And then the last spot, I think, is probably going to go to Jalen Rager just because of how good he played. And will the Vikings keep six wide receivers? Probably not. But even if they do keep six, I think it goes to the guy like Brandon Pohl instead. So I don't think Nikhil Harry really has any chance to make this roster. You know, maybe an outside chance. Maybe if he really plays well against the Titans and the Cardinals in the last two preseason games. And, uh, you know, Kevin O'Connell sees something in him. But Nikhil Harry, I just think he kind of caught some bad luck here with this room being just way too stacked. Another guy on this list who uh, what, actually played a decent amount for the Vikings last year, uh, Jonathan Bullard. Uh, listen, he didn't impress me too much last season. Uh, you know, he struggled, and uh, I just think overall with his game, like, he was terrible in the run game, and that's what you want from your defensive tackle. You want him to be that guy. Like, I mean, guys, like, dating back to, like, the Pat Williams and Kevin Williams days, like, those two guys, like, holding down that middle, even, like, a guy like Linval Joseph, that's the type of nose tackle that I want on this team. Bullard wasn't that. He got moved off the ball extremely easily last season. He just got bulldozed many times. Actually, PFF, they agreed. Like, hey, it wasn't too good in the pass rush game either, according to them. Like, I don't even know if he had a sack last season. But he graded out 56.5 overall, run defense at 62.9. And I've always made this comparison with offensive linemen and defensive linemen. They have the same relationship with, like, linebackers and running backs. Like, the defensive linemen are supposed to open up lanes and open up running holes for linebackers to hit that gap and get there. Well, if you have a guy like Jonathan Bullard in the game who's not really eating up blocks and not creating space for, other, for your linebackers to kind of hit that hole and be aggressive – it's just not the best, like, overall kind of fit for the defense. So he struggled last season. I think he was also a big reason why the Vikings' just defense just overall struggled. So it starts up front. I'd just rather see them go a different direction uh, at that defensive tackle spot. But, guys, this is where these were my five guys that I had could be surprise cut candidates. Off the top of my head, I'll actually give you guys a percentage right now. Booth, percentage he actually gets, gets cut, I'd probably put it less than five. I still think he makes this roster. But, again, if he struggles again and Brian Flores says, there's no way he can play. He's just not a good scheme fit. He could get cut. Troy Dye, I think, is way higher. Higher. I think it's probably around 75, 80% that he gets cut. Uh, Oli Uda, I'd probably go around probably go around 15% that he gets cut. Listen, swing tackles, no matter how bad you are, you're still you know pretty valuable. Nikhil Harry, I'd probably go 99.9. Like, I'd be really shocked if he makes this roster. Bullard, same thing. I'd probably go up there. I'd probably go high 90s for Bullard as well. But those are my five guys. You guys just need to give me one. Just name me one or give me another surprise cut candidate that wasn't on my list for the Minnesota Vikings. Listen, the Vikings have a pretty deep team, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, when the final 53 man comes out. They're actually not doing this year where they used to go from, like, uh, like the flat 100 down to, like, 90, down to 80. They're just doing it from 90 to 53 this year, so... It's going to be fun to see. It's actually the Tuesday after the final preseason game. So, guys, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Stay in the loop. Because like, when that day comes around, we may will for sure have a video for you guys. We may even have two that day if anybody shockingly gets cut. Keep your eyes out for Andrew Booth Jr. I feel like this is just like an avalanche or it's just like all downhill. I'm hoping he turns it around. I was a big fan of him coming out of the draft. So, hopefully Booth can turn this thing around. But right now, 
He's number one for my surprise cut candidates. Make sure you guys subscribe. See you guys next time. As always, go Vikes.